like one of those rap guys' girlfriends who understands those rap guys. <laughs> they only talk to her because she looks like a total prostitute, okay? I mean, her butt is just so big. I can't believe it. it's just so round. It's like out there. I mean, it's huge. Gross. Look. Uh, I want to so I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. And when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Wanna pull up tough because you notice that butt was stuck. Deep in the jeans she's wearing. I'm hooked and I can't. All right. If you are just tuning in now, it is 8 o'clock and we are on Uptown's Radio 202. I am Julie. I'll be your host. This is The Naked Truth. Tonight we will be talking to my lovely guest, Miss Patricia, and a friend of mine, of course. And stay tuned for a talk about condoms, sex, and then tonight our special job is going to talk about threesomes. So menage a trois. Anyone want to know information about that? Stay tuned. Nice. All right. So enjoy some big butt music, and then we'll be back and talk a little bit more with Miss Patricia. I'm here, girl. Hell yeah. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake that healthy butt. Baby got ballet dance in the open. Now here's my scandal. I wanna get you home and uh, double up. Uh, uh. I ain't talking about Playboy, cause silicone parts are made for toys. I want them real thick and juicy. So find that juicy double. Mix a lot, in trouble. Begging for a piece of that bubble. So All right, if you're radio. tuning in, this is Uptown's Radio 202. I am Julie, and this is The Naked Truth. Remember, every Thursday at 8 p.m., I will be showing Sex Topics live. And um, I am Julie. I'm a sex consultant. I talk to people every week about sex, topics, toys, vibrators, creams, lubes, lotions, and, of course, lingerie. And if you or anyone you know are interested in any of the topics we talk to or you want to know more, please call me or text at 703-909-2806. And if you want any more information, you can email me at partiesbyjulius at gmail.com. And before we start our show, let me give a shout out to the Uptown team, all right? Let's talk Miss Breezy every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Friday is the Dolly Talk Show at 9 p.m. And Saturday, Double XL Show with DJ Angel. So shout out to all the Uptown Radio 202 team. And when we get back, we'll be talking to Miss Patricia. So your girlfriend rolls a Honda. Playing workout takes my Fonda. But Fonda ain't got a motor in the back of her Honda. My Anaconda don't want none unless you got buns, hun. You can do side bends or sit-ups, but please don't lose that butt. Some brothers want to play that hard role and tell you that the butt ain't gold. So they toss it and leave it, and I pull up quick to retrieve it. So Cosmo says you're fat. Well, I ain't down with that, because your waist is small and your curves are kicking. And I'm thinking about sticking to the beanpole dames in the magazines. You ain't it, Miss Thing. Give me a sister, I can't resist her. Red beans and rice didn't miss her. Some knucklehead trying to diss, because his girls are on my list. He had game, but he chose to hit him. And I pull up quick to get with him. So ladies, if the butt is round and you want to triple X, go down. Mix a lot and kick them nasty thoughts. Baby got back. <laughs> Uptown's Radio 202. I'm Julie. This is The Naked Truth, and we're about to talk about sex all night long. So stay tuned for more. Yeah. Later tonight, we'll talk about three-way. But right now, we're going to introduce our guest. And before I do, I want to make sure everybody knows this is a mature audience only. If you're 18, great. Stay. If you're younger, bye. If you're 21, cheers to you. Let's have a drink. So, Miss Patricia, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a single mother. I have three beautiful kids. Yes, you um, do. I'm a security guard in D.C. Um, I do cakes during the day, so dragonfly dessert. If everyone, if anybody wants any cupcakes or any cakes at all, holler at us. We'll take care of you guys. We do delivery as well. Know. Nope. That's right, and I have tasted your cakes. In fact, you do specialized cakes. And when I do my bachelor party or I have my open house for sex slumber parties, she did an actual penis cake, and it was so delicious that everybody ate it. Both men and women loved it. Besides the fact that it was a beautiful, big, brown penis, it was 
amazingly delicious. I, I love, love the frosting. I think I told you that I like yeah. ate all the it frosting. It was a whipping fr uh, frosting. Oh my goodness, awesome. delicious. Yeah. Um, first off, let me ask you what I ask everyone when they get on the show. Are you single? Yes, I am. Okay, so you're ready to mingle. Uh, always. Always, always. I love that. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about your uh, personal life. Let's like expose you. This is the naked truth. We want to get real, real deep. And we want to hear our truthful things, and if there's anything you're uncomfortable with, well, take a drink and then answer. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, yeah, that's it's impossible. not you, right? Yeah, it's not you. Impossible. All right. So, Miss Patricia, do you have a high sex drive? Yes. Okay, and what makes you feel like you have a high sex drive? Guys do, but don't get it. Don't get it. We think about it all. Oh yes, men may think about it maybe three times the amount we do, but we still think about it. It's and it's very normal, and it doesn't make us um, in any way less of a important role model because sex is there and sex is great and it's good for you it's healthy but it's also you know fun and sex shouldn't just be oh between man and woman in my personal opinion what do you think i honestly don't have um or i'm not against any type of preference um my thing is um whatever is your taste is your taste right you know be free about it enjoy it love it um you know, give the best you possibly can to the next person because that's the point of it. You know? Right. So, I mean, whatever goes, flows. And sex is personal and it should be private as well. So if people are having sex, whoever they choose to have sex with, that's their business. That's very true. But here we like to share about that. So in a few weeks, we'll be talking to a couple of bisexual friends and they're going to explain a little bit about what it's like to be bisexual because I'm sure it's the, the choices and the different circumstances they're under. They have a lot of opportunities. They have a lot of choices. They have double the choices, yes. right? That's double the list. That is double you know, the we list. We usually have a list of three people on the line <laughs> making sure, but um, double the but list. But they can choose different sides. Yeah. yeah. And that too. And, of course, they can do multiple partners, which we'll be talking about later tonight, so stay tuned, because menage a trois is a new thing, I think. I think so. All right, so you have a high sex drive. Can I ask you when you first lost your virginity? Yes, I was about, I just turned 15, like a month after I just turned 15. That was the actually average age when I did my survey of about 200 girls in the DMV area as well, and theirs was 15. Yep. And do you feel like when you first had sex, it was the... I would say, was it worth doing it at that young of an age? Or do you no. feel like it was normal at that time? Look, it wasn't worth it. And it's normal in the sense that that's what every teenager wants to do. Right. Hormones. But, yeah, so hormones. But um, if I can go back in time and wait, I would have waited just um, to be more educated in the sense that uh, of the pleasing part because that was more of a just... Um, I Get was it like over a little, with. I was like, yeah, I was just a little, it was like a little taller trying to figure out, um, you know, their new toy. Yeah. So that's how it was. And it wasn't any type of um, extra pleasing. Like now it's it's different. Sex is, it's beyond um, what I thought it was at 15. I completely agree with you. And that is what I love about this show. Not only do you talk about, well, I've had sex, great. Now let's improve that sex. Let's spice it up. Let's do more. And in fact, I think you have been able to try a few of the products that I did that I do sell. Actually, I've tried almost most of them. Most of them. Okay. Do you have any personal opinions about any of the ones you did try? Um, I really like the massage one. I'm very into massaging. Um, you know, it, my thing is um, role playing. Role playing. Like, you Ooh. know, you got you got to spice it up before you get into the big. You know, foreplay. Exactly. Yes. Like, you have to do it. I mean, if you don't, it really kind of just like, nah. It's just I, there, right? Yes, it's it just like. Okay. Bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. No, no. Have a good day. Yeah. Right. We want to have more foreplay. Men and women do. Uh, ejaculate at different times. They orgasm at different times, okay? And I want to explain the difference between a man and a woman. A man usually uh, ejaculates between three to five minutes. Women take longer. So doing foreplay, meaning oral sex, stimulating the clitoris, giving oral, doing lots of different things is just a lot of fun, right? But we need to take a little bit longer to get to that orgasm because honestly, if you get us to orgasm imagine us having Ooh. multiple orgasms and because of you your partner get crazier you get even crazier oh my goodness you lose control Troll. your body Isn't shakes that the point, though, losing control I mean, yes. sex ain't supposed to be pretty it's supposed to be nasty 
I'm just saying. It depends. I think it depends on different people's personalities. Because I personally love what you're talking about. I love being all out there. But I know a lot of women that feel like they have to be conservative. And honestly, if it's private, why does it matter? You don't have to be conservative. It, that's what I'm saying. Um, I think that a lot of women get um, like really caught up in the what people going to think. And it's like, well, if you're in a room with another person and that's your person, then you should be as free as possible. That's the point. You're supposed to release yourself in a way that you can't release yourself anywhere else. That's the point. And communication. Like, having that communication with your partner makes a huge difference. For example, it won't hurt you guys and girls to ask your partner for a return. For example, if you please your partner, it's not going to hurt you to ask them, do you want to do it back to me? What's the worst they can say? No? Okay, then let's just, you know, get on to the regular sex. But it doesn't hurt to ask. And same with doing other sexual pleasures. For example, it's not going to hurt you to just ask your girlfriend or boyfriend, hey, can we try some anal stimulation? Even though it may be taboo, it's become more and more common. I would definitely say through my surveys, my polls, and my research, anal sex is there, anal stimulation, rim jobs, um, Men love prostate anal orgasms, but a lot of them feel like it's a homo homo homosexual thing, and it's not. I, I think, um, you know, throughout history in, in itself, um, you know, women has been, like, pretty much, um, di like, put down in a sense that you can't act a certain way, so then we take that to the room. Yes. So it kind of really, like... You know, we're in the 21st century. Come on, ladies. Like, if we want to get what we need, we need to get it. Um, the guys get it all the time. Exactly. Um, no questions asked. And my thing is, you know, if a guy is willing to get it from a woman, get head from a woman, give it back. Yes. You might get something better than that. You know? Yes. You might completely. get something extra. You know, it, it doesn't take much. So I think it goes both ways. I mean, but... Women, come on now. You, you guys got to get it in. And not just that. I would have to, actually have to say a lot of men who end up cheating, which will be one of our segments, is a reason they cheat is because women, if you're laying in bed and you're literally laying there, not working your body, not Sucks. trying to do any moves, mm. men become a little bit bored. They, they don't do, they feel do. like it's new and fun and exciting. It's not. So if you lay there, it's it gets out of – it gets – they, they, they gonna go somewhere else where they can find something better. I yes. mean, that's always the, that's always the thing. I mean, they have the option. They have that so option. That, it doesn't mean the they thing. will, but it doesn't mean you're in a strong relationship. Exactly. And so communicate. If you are faking orgasms, oh, which we don't. which we talked about last week, did you know? In my survey, 55% of men said they had. 49% oh, of men said they had faked an orgasm. 49%. And a oh. lot of men are, are ask me. I didn't think you could fake an orgasm. But oh. on my show last week, I taught you how. And, the, and I will say it again. Wear a condom because women don't check your condoms to see if you actually ejaculated. And try to do a doggy style or a style where she won't see your face. Because men, exactly. you do have a face, yeah. like we talked about last week. So we've had on the past, the woman's perspective was communication is what makes you not have faking orgasms. Right. Do you feel like there's something else that can create women and men not to fake it? I think most of all is um, you guys got to get into each other's heads. Like, it, there, it's more, okay, when you guys get in bed, it's, it's you guys get excited and then it, it, it dies down because you guys don't know what you guys want. Like, play with each other's, like, mind. Give each other ideas. Um, let each other know what you guys don't want, don't like, um, have tried, have it tried, will, are able to try it or want to try. Right. So, in that sense, you know, have the communication in itself also has to be you got to play with each other's mind. You got to play, you, you got to kind of test each other's mind and where are you at sexually? Yes, so. because when you're open and honest, you're going to probably be more pleased than being inside yourself and thinking, man, I really wish she would lick it. <laughs> Instead of thinking, I really wish she would lick it, yes. say it. Say, I really would love if you would give me... Lick me, please. Or any right way that there. you know you and your partner feel comfortable. For example, if you feel comfortable saying, hey, girl, it's time to get it on. I'd like you to pull your pants down. Then that's your way. But if you feel like it's more romantic way, hey, I'd love if you made love, love making to my penis right. with your mouth. That's another way. So if you have any crazy ways that a guy has told you, let's get it on. I want to hear about it. I actually have a few funny ones that we researched. And they were all about how to get a girl to, in a bed. And I'll go over a few of them later tonight. 
So let's get into this sexy song that I love. And I love reggaeton. And my reason for yes. loving reggaeton is I feel like it's so sexual. Yes. It's my favorite. I love to dance. I even Perreo. have enjoyed, yes, yes, I've actually enjoyed listening to this type of music while I'm in the mood and then oh, when I get it. I haven't tried that. I'm, I'm you should, have, because I'm, I'm like, when I'm listening go. to it and I hear that beat, I, oh. my body starts to okay. move with it. I may be a little tipsy sometimes when I do that, but... <laughs> The guys enjoy okay. that rhythm, that movement, nice. and then they start pounding with the music too. Hey, and you know what dale. what's expected. So hey, enjoy this song. We'll be back. This is Uptown's Radio 202 Naked Truth. I am Julie. My guest Patricia, tune in, and we will be talking more about condoms, orgasms, and sex. <laughs> We are back, Uptown's Radio 202. I am Julie and my lovely guest, Patricia. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Again, this is mature audience. If you're 18 and under, please leave. If you're 21 and up, have a drink, enjoy some sex talk, Mm -hmm. learn some new things for you and your partner. Now, let's talk a little bit, something different. You said you're single now, but what was your life before this? Um, before this, it was, I was in a serious relationship. Um, you know, it was a little off and on, but... With um, your... F- with my baby father okay. for about six years. Um, so, I mean, you know, in that, I mean, we tried new things. Um, you know, we, there's the occasional regular sex type thing. Right, uh, right, you know, quickie. Exactly. Um, and then there's those... Um, you know, when when you kind of talk, you know, little talks and, and you go, well, you know, why don't we watch this movie? And then you watch a movie that has a little bit of sex and you'd be like, I want to try that. Yeah. And just, you know, give a little tips here and there. Because so. that's open communication. Exactly. I mean, well, that's the way I found it. Because, you know, sometimes uh, <clears throat> when you are with somebody for a long time, um, you get into a routine. And yes. And it's really hard to kind of like Break not it. offend a person. Yeah, kind of yeah. like not a really offend a person and be like, mm, it's kind of getting a little boring Can right we right do something different so you know things that i've tried is more of a you know i worked at the strip club and stuff like that um as a, a bouncer and you know i'm, I'm like oh i saw this and i saw right. that i saw that know, too and i want to try this so that you know just to you know kind of like break the ice and be like hey can we try something new you know right right so when you were in that serious relationship was your sex drive the same as it is now that you're single Honestly, no. If, do you feel like it was because of your kids, because of work, money, finances? I think it's um, <clears throat> because, honestly, if you look at it in a truthful way, you, you got to really look at it. When you're in a relationship, emotions go into it. Um, it's more of a, you know, how am I going to please this person emotionally, um, spiritually, um, in, in all that sense. But now that I'm single, it's more of a... Hmm, Yourself. Yeah, it's more of like me. It's it's my time or I want to have this. And whoever's willing to, you know, kind of get into that, you know, relationship with me, then, you know, we can try something out. But I'm not really... It's not really the same. It's, it's really different because now I'm like, hmm... How would this one taste? Uh, mm, how would that one taste? And right. is that, you know, it's not like hmm, how I'm gonna make my man taste. You know, ten times different. It, it, right. It's a different type of everyone, mentality. Everyone is different, and exactly. there are different experiences. Exactly. Do you feel like when you were in that long-term relationship, and now that you're not, 
you're single, do you use condoms more, or how was oh, that when yes. you were together? Uh, uh, well, when I was with my partner, of course, it's just me and him. Okay. Um, so condoms wasn't even a question. Were you on birth control? Um, yes, I'm actually um, my tubes are tied and I have an IUD backup. You gotta always have backup. Wow, you know, that is so. an extra backup. Yes. I've yeah. never actually heard of a woman get her tubes tied and then have a backup. Um, what I, made you do that? Well, I um, well the tube tied is mostly reversible, so there is that chance, oh, I see. and I don't want it. Uh, I didn't want to have it a chance where it, the ba uh, the embryo can um, grow in, in the fallopian tube, where you know something dangerous can yeah, happen. Yeah, that's very to me dangerous and stuff like that. So it was kind of more of a talk to me and my doctor, and we kind of you know talked about it. And I said, what can I do extra? And she was like condoms, and I was like, well, I don't want to have condoms. This is my partner. I've been with him for so long. Why use condoms? And you know, she was like, "Well, we can do the IUD. It will still work the same way, and it's backup and etc. Cetera, etc." Cetera. So we went with that. For those of you who don't know what an IUD is, do you want to explain exactly what that is? Because I have yes. never had the IUD. I, my my birth control method was pills or the Nuva Ring, but I got pregnant off the Nuva Ring, so I am exactly. not promoting that. Exactly. Okay. Nuva Ring girls, stop wearing it. Guys that sleep with girls with Nuva Rings. Double check if she's really yep. wearing it. Yep. And then number two, wear a condom because yes. Nuva rings. You I never have know. five friends that there I have go. met that have had a baby on Nuva Ring. Are well, you? well, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wanted a backup because you never know. Yes. You, as a female, you must be 100% sure. I honestly have three beautiful kids. Beautiful. And honestly, I do not want any more. So um, it's, it's a lot. It and you're really young. Right. You are still young. You want to tell so your viewers how old you are? I'm actually 26 years old. 26 and single. Yes. <laughs> but... Um, you know, it, it, it's it's more of a I didn't I wanted to make sure I did not have that chance. So my chance is very like, you know, um, like point two zero some chance and stuff like that. But that's very slim. It's like me using, you know, a condom right, on top right. of everything else. Because condoms aren't a hundred percent effective exactly. for exactly. having kids. Exactly. So I mean Remember. The um the IUD is actually like a little T. It can fit in your hands. Um, it actually goes all the way up. Um, it has like a little string. But make sure, women, that you guys cut the string at as much as you possibly can because you know there's there's been problems where um you know the string itself it's really um Delicate hard. Or it, hard. Oh, no, it's really hard. It's it's like a it's like a um metal it's kind of like a little metal uh, metal oh, string okay, okay. so it kind of it can cut the the, the tip of the yeah the male's like uh, uh, um dick it, it, it just yeah. happens and you know girls make sure your doctor cuts it as much as possible i mean still being able to, for the doctors to reach it but not for the head of the dick to reach it right honestly right. that would really it, it's the worst pain now ever. who and in, who inserts it it's always a doctor that it's inserts always, the iud um yes it's always the doctor um you, you can go to um your regular doctor um or you can go to a clinic and ask them you know a lot of clinics actually do it nowadays um you know if you have either medicaid or insurance um you know you'll pay a copay, but right. it's not that expensive and, and it's Planned for Parenting. five years yeah Planned Parenthood it, yes. has, that has programs to help people yes. with low income and to be able to help you and stuff exactly like that. because it's really important for women especially we're the ones who carry it yep. of course men yep. have play a big role of but course. it's your body as well exactly and it's a 24 7 job when and honestly I'd also like to make a comment if a girl tells you she's on birth control and you just met her I still suggest you use Using a condom. Yes. You cannot always trust people you just meet or even people you know because honestly, I have met quite a lot of few people who I've interviewed and surveyed and they say, well, she said she was on birth control and she wasn't and that's how I had my kid. No. And that's a big deal you right don't now. Oopsie -doo. Because they can't see the IUD. Exactly. They don't always see the patch. They don't know when you're taking certain pills. The doctors actually give you, when you get your um, IUD, they actually give you a card that says you have your IUD. Wow. So females, always carry your IUD. I do. I That's great. My, I 
carry my IUD on my uh, on my wallet. It has it there. I mean, if anybody wants a question, hey, right here, baby. Maybe but later guess you what? can whip you it out. It. Exactly. And, 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 the, and the thing is, please, even though if you have your IUD, females, please use condoms. You never know where the guy's been the night oh, before, yes. the week before. I mean, you know, there, there, there's a lot of guys that say they're single, but, you know, unfortunately, they're emotionally still attached to someone, you know, out there. Right. And, and they don't they, use condoms exactly, with them because exactly. they have a trust. Exactly. And honestly, it's really hard to trust people with the circumstances that can occur. Exactly. For example, some people could black out and not know. Or some oh, people could exactly. have been sexually abused. Exactly. The horrible things can happen. So always try to use condoms. If not, always. backup method. And I really am interested in seeing this IUD packet. Maybe we can get on to that. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, it's really small. It's not even that big. So every girl that gets an IUD should have one of those. Um, I personally have, um, you know, had no issue with it. Um, luckily, I, I mean, the best part of it, I don't even get my period. Oh, my goodness. Are you I serious? I don't even have to waste my time in the aisle where you have to get some or you know, have that tampons. pain. It, none of that. I mean, it has eliminated all my cramps. I don't get cramps. I mean, I do get my, you know, usual, like my breasts get a little swollen here and there. Right, right. That's when I know it's, you know, it's, it, it's that time of the month. But... I mean, other than that, I mean, no period, no cramps. I have nothing to worry about. So these are so the pros. Those are the pros. Now, are there any and, cons to this one? Um, yes. Um, some women, um, you know, there's the 10 years and then there's the five year one. The 10 year has a, a higher dose of, of um, hormones, which, you know, can cause like um, blood clots and stuff like that. The usual. Right, right. With, but, with um, birth control. Exactly. Now, what about weight gain? That's a big weight issue gain, with weight I, I mean, oh, I'm you pretty look good. Great. I'm you pretty look good for amazing. it. Okay. <laughs> I'm Three pretty kids. good. So, okay. I mean, I've gained, but that's because of my own account, you know? Um, but I've lost weight easily. So, it really doesn't matter of the weight because, you know, it depends on. Well, it doesn't, that hormone, it doesn't like trigger. So you don't have to worry about your weight. Like the pills and yes, the past that exactly, I have. Exactly. Okay. So, women, for you who are like me, who are always like, no, I don't want to go on birth control. I'd rather just use condoms. That's my method. But you're right. I should have a backup method. And it's interesting to find out today that an IUD, not only can you prove that you have birth control, but it gives you those pros. No baby, no no cramps, and no period. That means like a lot of, lot of saving money. Yes, and, yes. Um, that's a lot of money. No more saved. PMSing. No more PMSing. Oh, my goodness. I mean, my mom had it for 10 years. So that's the reason why I, w I knew about it. Okay. So that's how you found out. So I was just going to ask you where you found out. Well, my mother, I mean, she had it for, t oh, she's already had it for 10 years. Actually, she just got her new one. And mm -hmm. um, so I always asked her, like, you know, how does Do it work? Do you mind if I asked your how old your mother's bracket age is? Um, my mother is actually 45. Okay. So even 45 year old ladies, okay, yes. you should still be getting it. And yes. that's so safe of your yep. mom and smart and very good at role model because yes. you knew about it through there. And yep. I recently just just learned about different birth control methods we'll have a segment all on it because it's important that you get on birth control it's also important for you to get the right one because exactly. some people have different you i guess different side body effects types. yeah well, also um the one the number one thing is that please learn your blood type okay i don't know mine a plus <laughs> you must learn your blood type because it, um, that helps out a lot in your genes and what you need, what you need to eat, what do you need. Like, that's the same thing with your, um, with a lot of birth control. Some women can't because of their, their blood type or because of, uh, anemia, uh, of their body. Right? Yeah, anemia and stuff things. like that. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things that goes into factor when you choose your birth control. Okay, you I'd know? love to have a segment and hope you can come back on that one. I would love to. I would Great. Love to. Um, we actually were talking a little bit about your job occupation. Okay. Let's let's get into a stadium. Stadium, yes. And if you don't know what stadium, it's not with uh, soccer balls. It's uh, a lot of women that like to dance and they're yes. naughty, naked, sexy ladies. I've had the pleasure to have slumber parties for them, yes. birthday parties for them. Yes. I've also had the pleasure of meeting them, being in the back room, watching all the stuff that goes down. Yes, and yes. I bet you have too. So this is what I would call adult industry work. Do you consider what you do being in the adult industry in any way? Yes, in every single way possible. I mean, I deal with artists. I deal with...
uh, you know, the strippers. I mean, some of the strippers are well known across the country. Um, they do. Uh, I mean, they do everything from, you know, um, model shoes. I mean, you, you name it they do it um you know they're not only strippers they're mothers um they're uh, you know they're business women i educators. mean they're, yeah, educators i mean they are women that i i can honestly say before i went in there i had a mindset about it and while being there i gotta say that the women there has changed my mind totally 180 percent um everything that they do i admire um it, it, it takes a lot to take your clothes off and to satisfy a customer and that mental sexual state a hundred percent i completely exactly. agree with you and actually if you didn't know this next week i will have miss mercedes with the vip entertainment and entertainment strip she's a stripper and she actually did my party for my good friend veronica on her birthday nice. and i'll go into what she did later tonight it was okay. so crazy so amazing i had to have her on my show because not only is she a mother hey. but she's a businesswoman there and she is a lovely person who is very very conservative at home and in okay. her world but when she comes to this type of industry she says she's like a split personality have you and met these women that have that personality yes all the time i mean these women have to take a lot in themselves to um separate both worlds yes because it's really hard um but it, it's it's it can happen i mean i've had to learn how to do that myself can you, you explain know? a little bit more <clears throat> well i mean i've been a bouncer for um a little over more than you know for uh, about to be four years mm -hmm. um i worked from ultra bar lux i mean i've worked throughout the whole um you know cafe citron i mean, I mean you, you, know, you went it. all the way to vegas before exactly so i mean i've done a lot uh, of different clubs and um you know you have to know what's your job and you have to you know define your family and, and your parts your personal life i would never ever invite my children i mean they're not even at the age to be able to even know they know that mommy goes to work and helps you know a lot of people because you know they're you know chocolate wasted or in that sense but honestly like you know it's hard but once you know what to do and how to do it it's easy you you know that once a certain time hits you and transition. that's your job it, you transition right over and you make sure that everything in your personal life is taken care of before you leave before i leave home my kids are either tucked in or i read them a, a, a book or you know mommy kissed them and says i love you i will see you later you know they know that i come in late at night i go up to their rooms i give them a kiss in the cheeks make sure that they're tucked in again and go right back to sleep and start my day all over again do you think that you would still do this job if your kids were at the age of 13? Yes. Okay. Um, what would you explain to your kids? Would you let the them truth. know? Okay. The truth. I mean, there's um, my daughter. I mean, I have one daughter and two sons. So when it comes to my daughter, I always have to think about um, what am I able to back up? Mm -hmm. So if I live a certain type of lifestyle, will I be able to back up and have the face to face my own daughter? Because she'll be asking questions. Exactly. exactly. Especially about sex. And then yes. I ask you, well, mom, well, I'm, I'm, is it something that I should know about? Or is it something you like? I think, yes. I think um, I've had the pleasure of having three beautiful women in my life um, to kind of give me three different type of perspe uh, perspective. My mom gave me more of the conservative. Um, um, my stepmother gave me more of the sexual talk. Um, you know, thank God I had her in my life. Um, without her, I wouldn't know what, um, you know, being, you know, safe sex and et cetera, et cetera. And I mean, she had the balls to sit down with me and give me that talk at 11 years old. But you know what? I preferred that because I knew how to take care of myself at 15. That's great. It, it might have been a couple years after, but I knew what I, I knew what to look for. I knew to make sure that it's, you know, that it's not just being you know, brought to me and I'm just, you know, falling into whatever because society is doing it at that age. It's because I wanted to do it at some point, you know. Speaking of society at a young age, your daughter is very young. Yes. And I have lately seen a lot of sex appeal with younger kids. Now, yes. how do you feel about that? Because when your daughter starts to grow up, sex is going to be out there. Of and course. are you going to, do you feel like you're going to talk to her more at a younger age than you were yourself? Um, you must always talk to your kids. I don't care if it's a boy or girl. I don't care what age. Right.
intimacy and they need to know and you think that as a mother you think that at the age five there's a line that needs to be drawn do you feel like society has changed that age when you were younger because i think that the age of eight or nine was when i hit that yes um society has changed a lot but i think um it's finally has changed to the point where um we can't educate our kids even at a younger age um whether it is again sexual abuse whether it's again um you know them just knowing that their sexual self exactly like like sexual orientation now some kids you know at a young age they know that yes they they do like uh, they don't like this you know the uh, opposite sex they like their own sex so you must kind of sit down you know always keep in mind that there's always counselors out there that you can talk to if you're not comfortable and, and, and parent, come in, yes, planhood parent, um, uh, they, they will help you out I mean you also have to understand think about how you how you thought at your uh, at that age and, and kind of about sex yeah about sex and about you know just cooties and liking the next person and, and wearing and clothes exactly, and what type exactly, of clothes is appropriate what what's clothes. inappropriate yes. what type of words to use i've exactly. actually heard little kids yeah. say the, the f-a-g word, word yeah, they say like all of it negative things and exactly. that comes from their family exactly. so i think that it, you're right i feel like it's really important so if you have kids out there and they're at a young age make sure that you do talk to them Always. Sex is important sex education is important yes. another reason why i do this is because i want to educate men and women but this isn't more for the younger crowd this is an education and i really want to teach college kids because we're at the age where we've gone through it 26 about to be 27 and when i was in college i barely knew about uh, any of the stuff when it comes to orgasms vibrators i was actually i feel ignorant because i used to comment on girls that that. have vibrators i would say why why would you have a vibrator you have a real penis in front of you and now i understand it's a different thinking it's a different level it's it's more yeah like i said always you know and and from the beginning when when you when um you know you have a relationship with everybody you must have a some type of mental relationship with that person in order for you to even have some type of relationship i mean you wouldn't you know put up with somebody's bs because for what reason again right other than because you could get that pleasurable feeling from another partner the majority of the time is mostly mental because emotionally usually some people get emotionally attached easily and that's very known but through sex yes especially women exactly but there are men out there that do it do too. the same yes. men are like that yes. too and it doesn't I've, make you gay and yes. it doesn't make you weird men if you are sensitive i actually had a guy today yes. tell me about no i haven't had a three-way but i had a three-way kiss and i'm like okay great how was that and he goes it was okay but i prefer one, one. and then yeah. he said why i said why he said because of intimacy See, yes and that's that guy, I would never expect well, him some to of them are very uh, spiritual. So, you, you That's know, true. there's a lot of people that are extremely spiritual, which, which whatever religion you are, I mean, um, it, it, it depends. So, I mean, for me, I've, I've grown out uh, of the common, um, you know, religion and stuff like that, the common things. So, you know, my spirituality is more of um, giving back uh, um, great energy always, all the time. Um, oh, so, okay. So you, you know, want to talk about giving and receiving, exactly. huh? Exactly. All right, well, let me ask you a quick question before we get into our next song. Are you a giver or a getter? I'm a giver. You're a giver. All okay. the time. Uh, lately, almost every girl has been saying getter. I mean, giver. Like, you, she wants to give. Well, because that's what we want to do. We want to give. We want to find somebody that will receive it and, and receive it in, in the most, like, um, appreciative way. More than that, actually. You, you When you give something to someone, even if it's not emotionally attached, you want that person to feel like they are special. They're number one. Exactly. Even if they're not. You, you still it's still yes. that that because that that the majority of the women don't want to admit it but hey it turns me on when a man is turned to fuck on yes now women and men both like visual stimulation i'm sure they like physical stimulation yes but women if you do choose to please your man or women that you choose to please your other women Yes. I definitely suggest that you turn around and 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 definitely thank the person. Heck yeah. And Why then not? give it back. Like exactly. it's a give and take. It's, it's not you take. know, it's like Christmas, I guess. It's a, pretty much. Yeah. Like if you're good, you, feel, you got a huge <laughs> present, a huge one, huge. and you give him a little small one. 
you know, you know, right, deep down your heart, you would have wished you had the same amount of, of, of that giving that you, you would have thought the same that way. That you gave. Yeah. So if I, and, and we weren't talking about packages, okay? We don't, no. we're not saying it's better because they're big or nothing. Right, right. We're talking about if you give me like 20 minutes of amazing Woo! oral and, and then I give you two minutes of oral, it's, it's, right, not, right. it's a give or take and yeah. be fair, okay? Right. Yeah. I, I definitely see what you're I, talking about. I would not about. mess with you after that. <laughs> no. I'd be like, bye. All right, girl. <laughs> well, if you are just tuning in, we will be right back on Uptown's Radio 202. This is The Naked Truth, and my guest, Patricia, will be talking more about sex, anal sex, pornography, sex at work, yes. and then, of course, the three ways. over a few fun sex things uh, with Miss Patricia. Sticks and I kind of wanted part. to give a little bit of a fun fact. Now, I do a lot of research every week. I interview, I do surveys, I do polls. If you ever hear me talk, then you know that it's all anonymous, confidential. So if you ever want to share anything, any fun, exotic, crazy stories, please share. Don't your be confidential. scared. Yeah, don't be scared. And I definitely wanted to let men and women know that when I looked at a bunch of the penile blood flow produced by 10 of the top odors, meaning what is a smell that turns on men's penile blood, which means erection, okay? The Ooh. top one is lavender, Meh. donut and black what licorice, and then pumpkin pie. So those yes. are the top three. And I always find it interesting that pumpkin pie hey. is one of them. You know what? Pumpkin pie gives you that warmy feeling like you... you like, mm, I don't know. I, I love pumpkin pie. And, you know, since I'm a baker, I know what it takes to do, like, a, a, a pumpkin pie. Yeah. So oh, you're you going to make about me a pumpkin it, pie, Oh, huh? girl. Mm -hmm. If you think about it and, and, and you smell the, the, the smell when it comes right out the oven. It's delicious. So I, I can't even imagine when guys go crazy I, I about it. I guess you're going to have to make a pumpkin pie oh, and let okay. me know what your partner does. Okay? You know what? I'm going to have to do that. You're going to have to yeah, do that. We're going to okay. have a little whole mix for our, our guests. All right. And then, interesting enough... The summer party consultants also found out that pumpkin pie is an arousal s stimulator for the men's penile. Oh. So we started having pumpkin pie creams, the, the way it smells and tastes. I, get you, like, you actually tried sensations. Yes, I did. We have a pumpkin flavor. You know what? need to give it. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll be doing that. And if you or anyone you know that want to try and 
sample any of my products, give me a call. I have an office in Columbia Pike, okay. right across Bailey's Crossroads. It's free and fun and it's easy. All you have to do is meet me. You take the product home, use it, bring it back, and then say, hey, I really liked it. I want to buy it. If not, I got something else for you to try. And always, always, I've never had any bad comments about it. In fact, they actually talk about the little bit of a price difference between MVC and the slumber parties. So if you know anybody that's having any parties coming up, let them know that I have a lot <laughs> of sexy things that they can use, bachelorette wise. All right. So we were talking about a few minutes ago, packages. Now, yes. what is your female perspective on the male size? The male size. Woo. Well, you know, well, you can say a lot, but I think overall, it depends on a woman. You know, um, some women like the extra, extra, extra large. And some don't mind, you know, the little, hey. But honestly, I mean, it depends on a woman and it depends on what they're looking for. Because you can't really say, hey, I want a big one, but you can't handle one. True. Huh. I'm just saying. It's true. Yeah. I've met <coughs> girls that have told me, I don't care about the size anymore. Number one. If there it's too go. big, it hurts. I'm not being pleased. Yeah. Number two, if it's small, they can actually angle to where a they hit way. a G yes. spot that yes. men can't hit if they're mandingo. Yes, yes. So men and women, just because your partner is either super huge or super small, size is not that big of a factor when I do surveys. Most of the time they say it doesn't really matter because it's not just the size yep. that matters. Like yep. they say, it's how you work it, how you use it. Yep. And same with women. A lot of men say it doesn't matter like if she's big or small. They say if she can work her body hey. and get me turned on yep. and ride me or let me play with her in the way that yes. I want to that's a different level exactly of, of exactly it, it, it's more being um, you know being very sexually aware of yourself and yes. being comfortable with yourself and confidence yes you ladies gotta and have gentlemen confidence, please if you don't have confidence in bed it it's sucks not, it's not fun and nobody's gonna exactly have a happy it, ending yeah, it's just I'll, gonna be okay, I'll be like bye I'll talk to you later thanks. it was nice you don't want that you want to exactly. go home and be like damn I came like three times. Oh. You want your girl to go home and say exactly. that. Or you want your man to go home and be like, I can't talk or about her. Or just, She's a, too just amazing. a significant other. I mean, she can pass down the line, you know, the, the message. Hey, you did a good job, yeah. you know. Or, like we're about to talk about, she could say, hey, he was really great. Let's try a threesome. Exactly. Now, let's get into that. All right. Miss Patricia. Mm hmm Have you had a threesome? No, I have not. Okay. You have not. No. If you were to have one, yes. what would your choice be? What would my choice be? Girl, 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 boy, or boy, boy? Ooh, whoa. Um, honestly, I would try the boy, girl. And what would be your reason? My reason is because I'm a dick girl, so I ain't gonna lie about that. But I don't mind um, females. I am very attracted to females. I think it's, I, I, I wouldn't choose a dom. No offense to any of you girls. I mean, you guys are beautiful anyways. Right. But I'm more of a into, um, hey, if you look sexy in heels as well as I do, come, hey, come along. You know? Would you have rules? Would I have rules? Um, it depends. Um, it depends if I'm in a relationship with a female or in a relationship with a man. I mean, it depends otherwise. But rules overall just goes on um, feelings. Feelings. Um. The, are you in a relationship with the guys? Um, are you guys in an emotional feeling? Then simple. Um, just so you would want to be the guest star or you want to be the star? I want to be the star. I want to be the star a, too. I do not want to be no know guest. That. I said it last no. time. But why do you no. want to be the star? Because I, I already explained why I want to be the star. Why do you want to be the star? Why? Because I think that's great. I guess because um, I, I, I want to learn how to kind of... Um, you know, be the one or be the like center of attention. Who wouldn't? Right. I mean, come on now. Like, so two, to, two people on you. Hey, so at me. you feel that you would be a star even if there's another breast and vagina involved? Because so? me, my personal opinion, I feel like I can't be a star. But Why? you still think you can be a star when there's another set of ladies. Why not? Well, they have the great. same thing I do. That's true. Okay. So <laughs> not different. Do you feel like if he were to spend more time with her, you wouldn't be the star? 
No. Okay. So she's we, giving. She's getting the same airtime I am. I okay. Mean, I mean, if it's the other way around, where I'm supposed to get the more airtime, then I'll let a chick know. Okay. Hey, so communication. Um, it has yeah, to be there. So for you to. to have a threesome, right? How would you initiate that? I don't know, cause I'm. You know what? I've had a lot of people initiate that with me in the club scene. Give me an example, cause I'd love to hear. Them, cause um, I've, I've talked to a lot of people today, and they told me a bunch. Well, of as them. as a female bouncer, I've gotten hit on. I mean, <laughs> well, you're sexy, so <laughs> that is not even a factor. But I mean, I've gotten hit on by guys and females. Of course. And I mean, I've even gotten hit by marriage people, and I've been taken back. Where I'm like, whoa. It's common now. It is, but like to me, like I'm not used to that. So okay. you know. I- I've gotten used to it over these couple of years, you know, hearing people come to me and, and be like, you know, what are you doing after your, your work? Are you going home? I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> not and with you. All right. Not with you. And, you know, it, 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 it it's a step back and, and it's, it gets you really humble, though, because you kind of really kind of think about like, what would I give to them that they want so bad? Right. You know, and you got to think about it and you'd be like, would I be as good as they want me to be or you know am i their type or they're just choosing somebody these are really great questions Mm -hmm. and i'd love to do like another follow-up if you ever do not a problem but my next question would be when it comes to threesomes do you feel like if you are in the relationship condoms yes or no yeah always always okay always do you feel like if you were with the your partner would you let the girl go down on him without a condom uh no okay so <laughs> even with oral sex you want your partner to have a condom yeah i mean if it's my partner yeah if it's mine of course if it's not um so go for it okay so if these are two people that you've decided to have the threesome with right. would you use a condom with the the male with oral sex yes okay what about the female would you return oral sex to her of course and would you use like a dental dam or would you use any type of protection for her? Uh, yeah, I don't know where she been. Okay, I mean, she's doing a threesome for a reason. And that's great. And I'm really you glad you said that it. because the majority of people I talk to in my surveys, women have all said, yeah, I use a condom, but I don't do it when we have oral sex during three ways. And I think it's really important that you guys know you can still get an STD in your mouth <laughs> and <laughs> you can still get an STD with a person. And that that's you nasty when you want to like flirt. I'm just saying. <laughs> so if you can see how women perceive STDs, like get checked, me. stay <laughs> clean, and keep using condoms. And every day that you need to know where can I get checked, just check out my Facebook.com slash Naked Truth with Julia S. Because I'll post different locations, DMV area, uh, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Although I'm in Virginia, I have talked to a lot of people in D.C. and Maryland, and they have other places. So please get checked. It's really important to stay safe. But I'm glad that you brought up the fact that even though you're with another man and a woman you would still use a condom yeah a lot of women who are um gay mm-hmm. when i've talked to them never use con never use a dental dam um first y- off let's explain what a dental dam is All before right, anyone ahead, doesn't know do you know what a dental dam is actually i don't mm-hmm. okay so a dental dam is another way to use birth con- not birth control an std way to prevent yourself from getting infected what you do is you go to the store and you ask for a dental dam and um they'll probably have an aisle they don't have it as much as they used to. Like, they had the sponge before. Okay, okay. And everybody knows about that in Seinfeld. Right, okay, right? okay, okay. So, if you know anyone that's looking for a dental dam, Facebook message me. I can show you where you can find them, and I can show you how to use them because it's important to use it right. Same with condoms. Last week, we actually had my good friend put a condom on for the first time. Ooh. Do you know where she put it? On her arm. Okay. Nice. So, the funny part is the guy that was explaining it to her was telling her how to do it. Right. Now, do you know how to put on a condom? <laughs> um, if it's needable, I'll try. I mean, I usually let that up to the guys. Um, and it's usually if you don't strap on it, it really doesn't happen. I mean, there's those occasions where it's just like, oh, okay, you know. But I usually leave that up to the guys. Right, right. You know, I, I mean, some guys I know like that it. there's guys that like that. There are and, some. And I that's mean, okay. And that's fine. And that's is. fine. Yeah. But, but you have to teach the girl to do it right. Exactly, because, because there's some guys that are like, hey, wait, 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 that hurts. Right. Uh, t- not too hard. It, you got to tip it and press it and get the air out of it. Exactly. There's a process. So if you don't know it, 
please don't try it. Don't hurt your partner. Please don't. Mm -mm. And also, remember, ladies and gentlemen, men have different sizes. So if your man is Mandingo or he's not, Woo! make sure you get a size that's comfortable. Because otherwise, like the guy last week told us, his male perspective was, if it's too tight, all he's going to think about is, oh, my God, this hurts. Ow. He's not going to be pleased. Ow. And also, if it's too loose, he's just going to be riding you and thinking and thrusting, oh, my God, this is going to come off. Instead of, oh, my goodness, Damn. this feels so good. <laughs> okay right so we are gonna come back right after this amazing song that i love to play and it was also requested by a good friend of mine uh she loves to sing this song and i'm sure you know it too it is two live crew pop that pussy oh and when we come it, back we it. will we will end the show with miss patricia and enjoy some more yeah. sex talk Doing shows, doing tricks to make us holler On a given night, call for a dollar Sell it on breast, oil on your chest Not like us, but above the rest They'll do anything to turn us on Them folks got it going on I like big booty and big old jeans Bitch, you know you can fuck by me So come and be my private dancer I got some money if that's the answer I really need more enough be with you I get hard after seeing you How hard? Hard like a rock When you make that pussy pop Make sure that everyone tunes in every Thursday for Uptown Radio 202, The Naked yeah. Truth, okay? So over the next couple weeks, we're going to be in an interview with strippers. Uh, we are going to do a schizophrenic point of view of sex. So knowing what it's like to be schizophrenic and then what your point of view is on sex. Oh, and I think that would okay. be great. He's a good friend of mine, very funny, entertaining. Nice. We're also going to talk about sex toys. So be ready and learn what is good, Woo! what is bad, what to use, what, what not to use. And always use lube when you use toys, Please. okay? And don't forget to check out every Wednesday, Miss Breezy on Uptown's Radio 202. Every Thursday, Dolly Talk Show. Every yeah. Saturday, Double XL Show with Mr. DJ Angel. All right, so we're about to end the show very soon, and I want to say thank you so much for coming. You definitely should come back. I really always, enjoyed talking always. to you. And I just wanted to go over a few really important things that I, you we went over. Okay, we went over condoms are great. Yes, always. always. use them. We went over IUDs. If you never yes. knew what an IUD is, watch the show from the beginning. And if you need more information, like I said, Facebook message me or text me 703-909-2806. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. And always go visit Stadium because sometimes you'll see Miss Patricia there. And working at Stadium, did you learn any new moves? Uh, Can you twerk it? 
<laughs> well, I've learned how to twerk it way before a stadium. Okay, so, so you can twerk it. Mine. Okay, she can twerk it. If anybody else Pause. can twerk it, please, please contact me because I want to learn <laughs> and I want to be able to teach other people that you can learn to twerk it or I want to be told that no. If you try as hard as you can, Don't you like that word, twerk it. Okay, what word do you want me to it, use? It really like... Shake that booty? It, it makes me feel like Miley Cyrus. Well, that wasn't um, twerking, no, okay? <laughs> Honestly, but um, how do uh, you know how? I mean, shake that ass. I, I mean, old school. Like, please don't bring it. Like, that's like, uh, twerk it. Ugh. But you can, but you can shake it. I can shake the living shit out of it. And in, in fact, they call it the washing machine. What's up? Okay, so the washing machine. If anybody <laughs> knows how to do the washing machine, let me know because I want to learn. Hey. And if you want to learn too. You got Miss Patricia over here. Hey. And if you need a special security guard, she's got your back because she's super always, great. And always. And she's tough as hell. You yeah. don't F with her. Yeah, if you guys ever want any type of um, personal shadowing or anything like that for special events, birthdays, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm willing to, you know, make a deal. You know, give me a call, 202-491-4759. I am more than willing to be there and be your girl. Make sure that you are 100% taken care of, whether that is the club, you know, the people in the club, whether that's just your persona and, and, and overall, I mean, I'm here, artists, um, et cetera. I mean, you alone, your home at that. I'm willing to secure your home if you like it to. So, well, there you go. Thank you so much, Miss Patricia. <laughs> it was a and pleasure, I baby. And I thank everyone for tuning in on Uptown's yes. Radio 202. This is The Naked Truth. And remember, book a free party with me, girls' night only. It's free. Samples are free. You get a good party. You know, you've been. <laughs> and then my website is www.slumberparties.com slash Julius. And if you want to be on the show or know anybody that's in that sexual entertainment, whether you're a stripper, you work at the club, that's strip clubs. If you know any porn stars, let me know. I want to interview and get to know people on that level. So have a sexually pleasurable weekend. And Woo! until next week, this is The Naked Truth with Julie. Yes. Lick my foot and my crack. Gotta put your neck into it But don't stop, just do it, do it Then you roll your tongue from the crack Back to the front then Suck it all till I shake and come, nigga Make sure I keep busting nuts, nigga All over your face and stuff Slow head, show me so much love The best head comes from a thug The dick good, dick big and long Slow up until the crack of dawn On the edge, make your faces and stuff the night make it so much love dead sleep when the sun comes up oh, yeah. lick it now lick it good lick this with the just like you should Come on. right now lick it good lick this with the just like you should my neck uh, my back lick my foot and my crack my neck my back lick my foot and my crack you might roll dust you might have cheese but fuck that nigga get on your knees a bitch like me moans and screams this is no what I mean And the club so fresh, so clean A whole day of niggas watching me So high in the line on green With a unit on my face, so mean I got the big words, nigga, I need To so suck it up, nigga, satisfy me You try me, I make you see Your bitches ain't got shit on me So lick it now, lick it good Lick this with the just like you should Come on, right now, lick it good Lick this with the just like you should My neck Get on my back.